So let's look at an easy way to create forms uh, using Dreamweaver. I'll start by creating a new document and um, I'll go ahead and do um, a liquid uh, layout and I'm going to do HTML5 and um, for my CSS I'm going to put it in a new file instead of adding it to the head so it's embedded. And I'll just hit create and it's going to um, give me a suggested name for my CSS. I'll go into my forms folder to save that. And then before I move on I'll go ahead and, and save this file also into the forms folder. And um, I'll just call this um, form elements and save it out. Um, now just remember that when when you're working with these layouts you want to start off by uh, getting rid of the placeholder text that Dreamweaver puts in there. Um, I also like to get rid of the link and the lo logo box up there and then just go ahead and um, put in my own title. And I'll make that a, a heading one. Um, and then you know down here I can just go ahead and and again delete all the content. I'll let you add in your own footer. And um, so Dreamweaver has this um, insert uh, panel or group for forms, just for forms. And um, so you can just click on any one of these to go ahead and insert that that form field. Um, so I'll go ahead and just click here on text field and um, and then we can give it an ID. So let's say that we wanted somebody to put in their first name. Now um, when you're assigning an ID you want to make sure that you have no spaces or, or funny characters in there. The label on the other hand that's the text um, that goes with that that the that the user sees. So that can be spelled out. And um, I'll go ahead and attach that label tag um, and then I'll just hit OK. Now Dreamweaver asks me if I'd like to add the form tag and I'm going to say yes. And um, so when I go in to look at this I've got a box here, a text box, and then notice the little red dotted lines and that's the um, boundaries of the form tag. So let's take a look at the code to see what happened. Um, so we got this form tag in there and right now this has no action. Um, the method is post and then it's given a name form1. And then inside that we've got our, uh, our text box. So that's an input of type text and um, the name that we've been assigned or that's been assigned to it is first name and also the ID is first name. So um, let me go to back to design view and um, then we'll take a look at, at that um, at the properties for this text box. Um, okay so what can we do here? We can set our our width, how, we, how wide we want that to be. I'd like it to be a little wider so I'm going to put in 60 um, to widen it out a little bit and then we can also put in the maximum number of characters. Now that number can be bigger than the character width like so that they could just keep typing but once they hit that max, uh, the maximum characters then they won't be able to type anymore. So I'll just go ahead and make that 100. Um, now if you're if you're using this form to input to a database you need to make sure that uh, that the maximum characters uh, is not any bigger than what the database is set up to accept. Alright so what else can I do? Now I can put in an initial value and that would show up inside this um, this field. Now if you're used to using HTML5 you probably want to use placeholder instead of an initial value and the advantage of that is that it will um, it kind of grays out and then it disappears once you start typing when you're looking at this in the browser. Okay so let me click on that form field again and let's see what else we can change. Um, 
Notice that I could assign a class to it if I want it to look a certain way. And, um, and then I can also make this a multi-line form or I can make it a password form field. So let's, um, we'll try those in just a second. So let me go ahead and hit enter. And um, notice that I did that. I selected this form field and then I used my arrow key to go right after it. And then I hit enter because I want to make sure that all my form fields are inside this one form tag. So let's go ahead and, um, and then we'll put in a form field for a password. So I'm going to go ahead and use this um, text field box again. And um, this time I'll call it password. And um, put in my label. Click OK. And so what we want to do with this is, is um, display it as a password by selecting this password option. And how that will work is when you view this in the browser, it will um, just show asterisks or dots when somebody types into that form field. So let me save it out and just show you in, in live view so you can get a feel for how that looks versus if I type in this um, in the name box, um, that's not a set up to be a password so that looks a little different. Okay, so um, let me go back out of live view and um, and then let's go ahead and um, and create a multiple um, uh, multiple line uh, text area. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that, and um, we'll just call this um, comments. And I'll go ahead and um, just click OK. Now usually when you have a comments box, you have, um, you leave a little bit more space into it. So I'm right after this, um, this label, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, shift enter. And then when I select this box, then I can specify the width and I'll go ahead and make that 80. And, um, and then I can also specify how many lines I want it to be. So those are the basic um, form fields for, um, for entering text. I'm going to save out my page. And, um, and then let's just talk about validation before we go on. Um, so if I want to validate, like one of the things I might want to do is just make sure that they actually enter something in there. Let me get rid of that initial value. And um, so what I can do is after I've created this form field, I can go and choose the spry validation text field. And then what it does is it adds some JavaScript and um, some CSS for us. And notice that when this is selected, I get a different uh, property inspector there, get different options. And um, so basically, the one that I'm interested in right now is this required box. I, I want somebody to type that in and I want it to give them a pop-up message if they don't type something in. Now right now this is set up to, um, to validate when you submit the form but I'm going to validate it on blur and um, what that means is that when I click outside of um, outside of this form field. If it's empty, then it'll uh, pop up with a message. So um, let me just show you what that looks like. I'm going to hit save and then um, let's see if this will show up in live view. So let's say I click in there. Notice that now when I click in it, it turns yellow. And then if I go and click somewhere else, I get this message, a value is required. Um, so that's, you know, that's really helpful for somebody filling out a form kind of gives them some feedback right away. Okay, so let's say I want to play with that a little bit. Um, so when I click inside this field and then click on the blue tab for the spry, then I can go down to this pull down and then change um, the pull down to required. And then if I want to, I could edit this text that pops up. And um, I could just change, like maybe I don't want to say a value is required. Maybe I just want to say um, required. 
whoops, I think I deleted the whole form field, so let me try that again. So I just want to say required. Get rid of the period. All right, so then, um, so you can kind of customize these, and if you want to play with the CSS, you can change colors and that sort of thing. Now, whenever you use the Spry, uh, there's a folder that gets created called Spry Assets, and so you want to make sure that that folder gets uploaded um, so that you can see this work on the server. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put in another field here, and um, this time I'm, I want it to be an email address. So I'm going to go ahead and just start by clicking for the Spry validation text field, and um, I'll just call this email. Notice it looks um, pretty much the same as um, as what we've been seeing so far. I click OK, and then again, I you know once because I've set this up to be Spry or validated with Spry, um, then I get my um, properties for Spry. And um, so what I could do is um, change some other values here. Like, I, again, I want to validate on blur, but this time I'm going to specify a type. I'm going to specify this to be an email address. And um, so let's see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and save, and let's go to live view. And then if I try to type something in, and then it knows that um, that this is not an email address, it's not a valid email address. So, so the person actually has to type in an email address for this to work. And then when you do do it right, then it turns green and you give some nice quick feedback like that. So that's handy. So another one that's kind of handy, um, just going a little further, is um, you, can, you can enforce patterns. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and um, make a, um, a an import input field for the phone number. And um, I'll go ahead and click OK. And so now what I want to do here, let's go ahead and um, give, make it a little wider. Um, so what I want to do here with the spry is I want to specify a phone number, and this assumes that it's um, a U.S. phone number. And then down on the bottom there's a checkbox, Enforce Pattern, and I'll show you what that does. Um, so let's save that out, then look at it in live view, and then watch what happens. As soon as I start typing, it knows to put in um, um, all of the little things that you would expect in a um, phone number. Whoops, I think I've done something wrong. Let's try that again. Hmm, it doesn't seem to be working in live view, so let's try it. Um, let me save it and then just uh, take a look at it in um, Firefox. Let's pull this over. Okay, so I'm not typing in the dash or the parentheses, it's just putting them in there for me. So that's kind of nice. And then, of course, if I don't do a correct phone number, then it'll let me know. So let me close that out. Okay, so um, so let's look at, there's a couple more uh, different form fields to look at. Um, so one of them is a checkbox and then and then there's also a radio button. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in a checkbox and I'll call this um, junk and then the label will be um, send me junk mail and I'll just go ahead and um, notice that it this time it puts the, um, the label after the checkbox. Now what you can do when you select this text, te 
text box is you can specify what would the value be if um, this gets submitted. So I'm going to put in, um, well let's just put in true. That's probably a good value. So if somebody were to select this and um, submit the form, then true would be submitted. So I'll go ahead and um, make that initial state checked so uh, so that if somebody does wants to opt out, they have to go in and, and check it. Okay, so the next uh, kind of form element is um, a check, uh, sorry, a radio group. Now you could put in a single radio button, but radio buttons are usually used for when you have a choice out of, um, you know, any anywhere up to about five works well with the radio group. Um, so let's call this um, size, and um, and then we'll go ahead and put in. Um, the labels and the values. So again, label is what shows up on the page. Value is what would get submitted to the database. And I'll go ahead and add another one. and I'm just kind of clicking here. Okay, now I can lay this out using line breaks or a table. I'll just go ahead and leave it at line breaks. And if I need to move these around, I can just select on one and then um, use this little um, icon here to move it up and down and then just click OK. Now I spelled this one wrong, so what I want to do is just uh, fix it. And um, let's look at the code for these. Um, I'll go to split view. So for my um, for my checkbox, uh, this is what that looks like. The type is checkbox, and then for my radio, my radio button, um, I have an input type of radio, and then the name is size, and then the value is whatever that value was that I put in for that particular radio button. Now what makes this a group is that all of these have the same name which is size. So if I wanted to I could just go ahead and add another one and, pro and the easiest way to do that is to um, is to just copy and paste. So let me go ahead and I'll grab this um, this large, the whole all of the code for large and I'll control C and then I'll control V and so what would I change? Well um, size is going to stay the same and then I'm going to change this to extra large so XL and then the ID is going to be um, I'll just call it size 3 and then for my label I would just change that to extra large. So now when I come over here I have another one and um, what I need to do is just add a little BR in there, um, a little line break with a shift enter. So that's how you would work with a radio group. And just to see how that works, when I go into live view, let me go into design, the radio group only lets you choose one of these at a time. Okay, so next, um, next up, oops, let's go back to design view, turn off live view. Next up um, is um, let's see, oh, a menu, okay, so, um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and click the select button here, and, um, so let's call this state, and, um, and we don't really need a label here, um, well, actually, we do, so let's go put in, we'll put in state, um, and, uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and click OK to get started on this. And for this what I have to do is I need to populate this pull down menu. So I'm going to select this. Now later we'll learn how we can populate this with values from a database. But for now we're just going to type them in. So I'm going to click on list values and then I'm going to put in some values here. So let's, um, let's see, uh, California and then the value would be CA and let's see Arizona and the value would be AZ and then um, Ohio 
So that's OH and um, Utah. UT. Okay, so I've got four here. That's enough to get the feel for what's going on. And again, if you need to, you can use your little arrow key to move things around or to, and you can use the minus to subtract things. Whenever you want to add a new one, of course, you hit the plus. So I'm going to click OK. And um, so let's see how that works. I'm going to save it and go to Live View. Scroll down. And um, so this works as, um, as just like a pull down menu which you're probably used to. And um, so if I want to play with that a little bit, I could go ahead and go back to list values. Maybe I want to add one that says um, select a state. Or click to select or something like that. So I don't need a value for that. And um, what I can do is just m move that one up Let's try that. If I move that up to the first position, then that'll just show by default. Um, but I could also initially select one of them, um, and that would just be the one that shows up. So you can initially select one that's in the middle of the list if you'd like. And um, so the last thing that we want to do is, is add a submit button. And I'll just go ahead and click OK and OK. And um, so this this is a submit button, um, and if I wanted, I could change it to a, a reset form, um, and um, and then change the value to um, to um, reset. Um, so this value, let's change it to search, and notice that you can change what shows up in that box. But I'll go go back and just change it to submit because people are used to that. But um, but again, you can use something that's a little friendlier for your particular form. Now, um, what you can do if you select the whole form, you get the properties for the whole form. And here's where you could specify an action and um, like maybe we want to have a confirmation page that we go to when that form field is is submitted. So um, so for example, maybe I maybe I just want to have a confirm.html and then when you click on it, it goes to that page and it says thank you and that's all. Um, so later on we'll learn how to do things um, that are more sophisticated like display the data uh, inserted into a database, that sort of thing.